Okay, well by my clock here it says that it's 6.30, so it's time to begin the webinar. Uh, I'm going to begin with a, a brief introduction about our topic and also my co-presenter tonight. What we're going to talk about is creating and executing distribution plans. And part of what we're going to be doing is we're going to be featuring um, a group that I've been, we've started working with, both with the Golden State Pool Trust, but also with the Dale Law Firm. And so anyway, I want to introduce Julia Otis from TrueLink Fi Financial. And Julia, you are there, right? Yes, I'm oh, there. She is there. OK, so um, and uh, th throughout, this is the first time we've ever presented together. So this will be interesting to see how this works. I'm going to be talking about the concept of distribution plans for the first part of this. And then the second part of this is we're going to talk about a tool that we've been using called the TrueLink card and, and talk about how to use a TrueLink card in the distribution plan. And Julie is going to demonstrate how the card works. So that'll be the second part of this, assuming that everything works correctly. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get started with this. Now, for those of you that are watching tonight, um, if you would like, you'll notice that the, the screen there that says go to webinar, if you have that opened up where the questions are in the chat and all of that. Um, there's something that says handouts and if you would like you can download the handouts. Otherwise what we will be doing is we'll be setting up a link after the presentation uh, for those that are watching that we'll send to you where you can download the handouts but also we'll talk about how you can get the handouts later for those of you that are watching on uh, our YouTube channel. So let's chug through this a bit. Uh, so let's go through this. You know, part of this with distribution plans, and this is something that we've been um, advocating for years, is that in more and more in the trust that we're creating, we have either a mandatory or optional uh, plan that we call a distribution plan. Now basically it's a budget as we go through this, but what we've really found is by doing these plans, by doing these annual plans, it really resolves a lot of issues um, here and it also helps us to identify uh, problems that we may have and anticipate them before they become a problem. Um, so with distribution plans, it provides all parties, including advisory committees, because many of the trusts that we do have advisory committees, and by having that, that, that written plan commonly referred to as a distribution plan. So it gives a tangible tool for everybody to get involved. And in fact, um, at the very end of my portion of the presentation, I'm going to show you some language that we typically put in our trust that calls for these distribution plans. And what we basically do with these things is that we put the plan, the budget together, we run it past the advisory committee, or the trust protector, whichever we're using. And, and basically, once the plan is put together, our budget is put together, we have we've basically have um, uh, the advisory committee or the, the trust protectors basically have um, pre-authorized the trustee or the trust advisor, as we'll talk about, to carry out that plan. And, and in many cases, um, for our trust advisory committees, this is the primary job that they have. They can use the distribution plan to review, reflect upon, and provide it, uh, informed advice that the trustee or distribution advisor can use to direct future trust activities. Now, I've introduced a new um, uh, term or player in this called the distribution advisor. And, and part of what we're doing here is that I know for myself with the Dale Law Firm, um, we have gained a lot of experience with uh, uh, advising with the Golden State Pool Trust on making distributions and that kind of thing. So more and more for trustees, professional trustees, family trustees, or whatever, uh, we're doing more and more distribution advisement on trust. And basically what we're doing is we're taking these plans, we're looking at them, making sure that we're not going to have a problem with somebody's benefits here. And then in many cases, the trustees are authorizing us to carry out the plan. And so um, once again, 
the trust the distribution advisor could be an attorney there's other groups that do this but more and more um, once again for us at the Dale law firm we're serving as distribution advisors in most cases this plan is created primarily by a care manager so um, once again oftentimes for folks will actually hire a professional care manager um, to go out and do an assessment in fact I've had three assessments done this week um, and what they'll do is they'll come up with advisement as to what they think the beneficiary might be able to benefit from and once again that's put in front of the decision makers including the trustee trust advisory committee or trust protector we found that performing an annual plan of, um, here reviewed by the advisory committee and trustee should be the primary function here of the advisory committee and what for those of you that have the uh, achieving independence guide we really get into that quite a bit about the role of the advisory committee and part of this is we want to make sure that what the advisory committee is doing is relevant but we don't want to turn it into a major job the trustees so the struggle for most trustees of special needs trust is how do you provide for a beneficiary's needs without giving them cash since the use of cash will almost always affect the beneficiary's eligibility for programs such as SSI and Medi-Cal. Okay? And, and as it says in the box there, Social Security uh, requires that the trustee have sole and absolute discretion in order for the assets of the trust not to be counted as an available resource and affect their eligibility for benefits. So how do, you know, when I'm serving as trustee, how do I get people stuff when I can't give them cash? And the Social Security Administration um, that, that administers the SSI program and the Department of Health Services that oversees the Medi-Cal and in-home support services programs requires that all distributions from a special needs trust be in the sole and absolute discretion of the trustee. And this is a really important concept to keep in mind as we talk about distribution plans, but even more importantly, how do we execute that plan? If a beneficiary is able to access funds from their special needs trust without showing that the trustee authorized the distribution, then we're really putting the beneficiary's eligibility at risk. So here's a four-part distribution process to keep in mind as we walk through the process and we have Julia talk about um, the tool that they have that can assist in that. So the first part of this, and, and, and for those of you that are able to download the, um, the handouts, there is a toolkit there. And one of the things that it has is a distribution worksheet. And so what the beneficiary or the beneficiary advocate, the person that is assisting the beneficiary, so it could be a family member, it could be a friend, it could be a care manager, what they do is they complete a disbursement worksheet and they submit that to the trustee or the trustee um, um, dis distribution advisor. The second part is that we come up with a distribution strategy. So the trustee or the distribution advisor leads the process to create the distribution plan. And the trustee or distribution advisor coordinates with the beneficiary and or the beneficiary advocate to agree on how disbursements will be made and what disbursements will be made. The trustee or the distribution advisor then sets up the approved disbursements. And this is a lot of what Julia will show us later in the presentation. Now, if we're using a TrueLink card, and we're going to focus a lot on the TrueLink card, you can do something very similar with a common credit card, but there's some advantages that we found with the TrueLink card um, in many situations, is the beneficiary or the beneficiary advocate is issued a TrueLink card for approved distributions. And then the last part of this step is the execution. So the trustee or distribution advisor tracks the approved distribution disbursements. The beneficiary or the beneficiary um, advocate provide required documentation as we're going to talk about and something I tell people all the time. The TrueLink card is a wonderful tool but there is no such thing as a magic card and so part of this as we go through this and we'll ask Julia to expand on this more is that we are going to need documentation to be able to show that the distributions that were made were those that were approved by the trustee or the or the distribution advisor. 
and new uh, uh, disbursements are approved and documented on an ongoing basis. And that's what we're going to talk about as we go through this. Um, it's impossible to anticipate any every distribution that might come up. So things do come up from time to time um, that maybe were not expected, and we have to be able to um, to take care of those needs. Now, um, one of the um, handouts that um, is there to download, um, and also this is in the uh, toolkit that we've provided, is a distribution plan worksheet. And you'll notice that it's, uh, it's done in different categories. So, you know, we're often looking for fixed expenses, um, and what we have first are what are called the ISM issues. So those are things like, you know, payment of rent, mortgage, insurance, taxes, groceries, restaurants, uh, heating, electricity, trash, garbage, water, and sewage. For folks that are on SSI, if we pay those items, it often will result in a reduction in benefits. But also you'll notice a number of other things that are listed, common things that, um, folks might ask for um, uh, all different subjects. And what we're asking um, the uh, folks that are putting the request together is to think about what it is that we need to provide for the beneficiary here and put the amount down. And from that, we'll uh, start working on that to create the plan. The beneficiary or the advocate fills out the distribution disbursement worksheet. The worksheet provides an opportunity to lay out how they would like to use the funds and improve the beneficiary's quality of life. And it details the amount expected to be spent on everything from ongoing expenses like in-home care or phone bills to one-time expenses like home improvements. The beneficiary and the uh, an advocate are guided in the process with information about what the trust can and cannot be used for um, if the beneficiary is an SSI recipient. And as we had talked about, if the trust is used for food and shelter for SSI recipients, the beneficiary's benefits may be subject to a dollar-for-dollar dollar reduction capped at what's called the presumed maximum value, which in 2016 which is when we're recording this, is $264.33. Now, by the way, a common myth I hear all the time is that you can't use a special needs trust for food and shelter. And let's, let's be realistic. What is it our beneficiaries need more than anything else? Food and shelter. So, um, once again, I can't remember the last time that my office drafted a special needs trust that could not be used for food and shelter. Of course, we want to keep that as an option, but we also have to realize that when we pay for food and shelter um, items, it can cause um, a reduction in the beneficiaries' benefits if they're on SSI. Now, to learn more about these restrictions, if you go to the Golden State Pool Trust. Uh, website, which is gspt.org forward slash beneficiary resources. There's a video called Paying Rent if the beneficiary is on SSI. And even if you're not a GSPT beneficiary, the concept is the same, um, whether you are a beneficiary of a, um, a non-pooled trust or a pooled trust. The concept's exactly the same. So, so, so with that, there has to still be oversight. As, as I said, going back to the concept that there's no such thing as a magic uh, card. So if you are a trustee, um, you still have to have oversight as far as what distributions are being made. So the trustee or the distribution advisor reviews the disbursement worksheet. The trustee or distribution advisor establishes the distribution plan containing the recommendations for reoccurring and ongoing expenses for the next year, as well as upcoming one-time expenses in light of the beneficiary's needs and goal, the size of the trust, and the benefits um, eligibility requirement. And the distribution plan is reviewed with the beneficiary or the beneficiary advocate. So that's, you know, more and more we're spending time doing that. By the way, the other nice thing about doing these plans, and we'll touch on this a little bit, is that usually when we do these plans, we do a projection that if we spend at this rate, how long will it be before we run out of funds? And that can be very useful in the process as well, because obviously we don't want to spend the money 
in the first few years. We need to, in most cases, stretch it out over the lifetime or the projected lifetime of our beneficiary. Now in execution, the trustee or the distribution advisor and beneficiary or their advocate agree on how approved distributions will be made. Um, it's not always done with a card. It could be done with a check. It could be done with electronic transfer. Um, for uh, many of our beneficiaries, we set them up on an ongoing um, electronic transfer. For instance, if we're paying their rent and we know we're going to be paying $550 a month every month, we'll just set it up on a reoccurring um, uh, payment here. Uh, or we can use the TrueLink card, and Julie will go into the advantage of the TrueLink card. But that can be really useful for things like buying clothing, paying for gasoline, and having a certain amount of autonomy. You know, one of the problems oftentimes with special needs trusts, because the trustee has to show that they're, they're providing discretion over every distribution, is they tend to be a little bit on the paternalistic side um, here. And, and that in some case, in most cases, that's not really our goal. You know, our goal is really to focus on quality of life. And so the nice thing is when, when it's appropriate to have a tool where they can actually go out and make purchases themselves um, and make some decisions and that sort of thing on themsel themselves, you know, that has a real value. All approved disbursements are set up in advance using the TrueLink system. And the distribution plans, request receipts, and documentation of all approvals are tracked in the TrueLink system so that the trustee or the distribution advisor can produce a comprehensive record demonstrating discretion over all um, funds use as needed. And I'll tell you that's really important because Social Security has set a goal that they are looking to review every special needs trust. And so it's really important to not only make sure you do the distributions correctly, but also to make sure that you're you're uh, keeping records so that if you're audited, you can show that the trust is showing proper insight. So, in many cases, a beneficiary or a beneficiary advocate has issued a TrueLink card that they can use to make approved purchases. And the TrueLink card, it's a Visa card that combines the advantages of a credit card with the ability of the trustee or distribution advisor to import, impose important limitations on spending to protect the beneficiary's eligibility for benefits and ensure the card is not misused. The, Trustee or distribution advisor can customize the card to block, um, to access to cash, specific merchants, or entire categories of spending, all while allowing cardholders to safely purchase what they need when they need it. it at any time, the trustee or the distribution advisor, whoever is in charge of the account, can use the TrueLink system to generate a record of where the purchase was, were allowed and where they weren't, and this is further evidence of the trustee showing discretion. The beneficiary's name is printed on the card, which bears the Visa logo. The, the TrueLink card is, non, is non-transferable. It can't be sold for cash or given to another person. The trustee or distribution advisor can load funds into the card from the beneficiary's trust account. And the trustee or distribution advisor loads the TrueLink card based on the distribution plan or based on the individual disbursement's request. The TrueLink card for each beneficiary is configured to allow purchases only where agreed upon. So for instance, it can be used at gas, pump, uh, gas stations at the pump, for instance, or it might be, uh, and what we found oftentimes is we try to find out where the beneficiary does their shopping, and we might limit it to that sort of thing. So if we, I have one beneficiary who is just nuts about Macy's, won't go shopping anywhere else, and once again, we've allowed this to be used at Macy's um, uh, or a Cricket Mobile. After making purchases, the cardholder has to collect the receipts and submit those to the trustee or distribution advisor um, here so that we can keep those records uh, and show um, what the purchase was, were made for if we get audited. The cardholder can only spend on what the administrator allows the card 
uh, allows and loads onto the card. And if a purchase is attempted and there are insufficient funds on the card or if the transaction is disallowed, the attempted use will be blocked. Now, I will tell you, we know seconds after a distribution has been denied or there is an overdraft. And oftentimes when there's a problem, we're able to correct it pretty quickly. But it's something where you get instant, um, if, if you um, opt for that option, you get an instant notice that something went wrong. The TrueLink card cannot be overdrafted and the cardholder has limited access um, even to the amount loaded on the card. And for some of the beneficiaries we work with, that could be really useful. We've been using credit cards for years and years and years um, and, and having folks rack up their expenses on the credit card um, and paying off the credit card. Now the problem that we ran into is that um, if you pay off that credit card on a regular basis, there is no way to control the credit limit on that credit card. And, um, and unfortunately, we've had a num number of situations where beneficiaries have misused the card, racking up tens of thousands of dollars um, in expenditures that we're just not able to reimburse, and that can cause some real problems. Unexpected needs do come up um, that aren't anticipated in the plan and anything from a car repair to a trip to the hospital. In fact, we had a case not long ago, and maybe we can talk about that later with Julia, where we had somebody who was traveling in Mexico and had um, a situation with their beneficiary where the beneficiary um, had to go to the hospital and we needed somehow to get um, a thousand dollars to the hospital immediately. Normally we would have had to jump through all sorts of hoops to make that happen and wire it and of course these things always happen on the weekend. We were able to um, to load up the card and be able to make that transfer with the TrueLink card in a matter of hours, saving a lot of hassle and a lot of anxiety. In this case the beneficiary the beneficiary advocate would submit a um, a special request to the trustee or distribution advisor about whatever that unexpected distribution is. The trustee or distribution advisor refuses the request and if approved disperses the funds via check, electronic transfer, or restricted deposit into the TrueLink card if that's the mode that we're using. And the beneficiary or the beneficiary advocate may be required to provide receipts um, or proof of purchase unless it's absolutely obvious from the disbursement what's being made. We always require receipts. For instance, if we authorize somebody to make dis, um, purchases at Target um, for specific things, we can't really see specifically what they've purchased. And so that's one of the reasons why we have to keep receipts. So just keep in mind, for those of you that are trustees that are looking at using this system and following the distribution plan, one of the things you really have to look at is whether the beneficiary or their advocate is able to follow instructions and give you those receipts. And if not, you may have to find another way to make disbursements. Full documentation of this process is tracked by the TrueLink system. So with that, we usually suggest an annual review. Now the first plan we do is usually the most involved. And after that, um, years later, what we do is we look at that plan, make adjustments, um, and less time is spent on them, but it's usually the first one is the most involved. And I, and I, and once again, we will be doing some programs coming up on utilization of professional care managers, which we think are um, an absolute godsend in most situations, especially when we have court order trust, in really determining what the, what is really best for the beneficiary and the beneficiary's needs, and that's somebody you really should consider using in the plan. The plan should also be reviewed by the financial advisor to assist in developing an appropriate investment plan. You know, one nice thing about using distribution plans um, here is that the financial advisor and the tax advisor in this situation can look at what the anticipated expenses are and be able to adjust the investments to make sure that what we're doing is really fits the beneficiary's needs. It also insists on making sure the trust is not exhausted 
too early. And I'll tell you, this has been one thing um, that we've really focused on a great deal. And I'll tell you what often happens. The distribution plan comes to us. Um, we put that all together. Actually, um, uh, my wife and my partner, Terry Dale, she does a lot of this because she's a lot better at spreadsheets than I am. And what she does is she projects that if we spend at this rate, how long will it be before we run out of funds? Those projections are really useful because oftentimes we'll come back and say, well, it's not okay to exhaust this trust in 20 years, and we'll start scaling back some of our distributions. Now, um, I'm going to provide this once again as an example uh, because I'm sure it's very difficult to read this, but this is language that we use, and once again, we are authors of the Wealth Council and Elder Council Special Needs Trust for those of you that use that trust. This is an option that um, actually can go into that trust. And what this is is, um, uh, is sample language where uh, this is requiring a distribution plan to be developed once a year, that it be put in front of the advisory committee 15 days before it's implemented. And the advisory committee is to look at that and they can give advisement on it and then they would give it back to the trustee and then the trustee could either opt to carry out the plan themselves or we have more and more of our trustees that are hiring the Dale Law Firm to do it for them after they've authorized the plan. So that is the end of my part of the presentation and um, hold on just a minute and if the magic works here I am going to turn this over to Julia. So let's see if we can do it. And uh, Julia, hopefully, um, uh, and there you go. So oh, Julia, um, tell us a little bit about TrueLink Financial and, and walk us through this. Great. So. Um, I know Steve obviously has been talking about us quite a bit thus far, but just to give you all a, a very quick overview, uh, TrueLink is a financial services company and we're based here in San Francisco, but we serve folks nationwide and really our goal is to improve the financial well-being and independence of people um, who may be more vulnerable to abuse or need assistance in their money management. So what that actually shakes down to is we end up serving a ton of people um, who have disabilities. So either we're helping them um, with their money management or we are serving their families who are assisting them or we're working with professionals like Steve. So working with uh, special needs trusts, pooled trusts, attorneys, fiduciaries, representative payees, you name it. So basically in any situation where an individual needs a little extra security or whether there's compliance issues at stake, um, our system aims to address exactly that. So um, what I'm going to show you today is I'm going to give you a demo of our card system that Steve has been referencing throughout this presentation just to give you some visibility into how it actually works. And then I'm going to shift gears a little bit and show you our broader system um, that is uh, used by a range of people. So families, again, who um, may be serving as trustee for a loved one, attorneys who may be providing a distribution advising, um, or trusts themselves. So it's a broad, comprehensive system that includes the card. So includes things like disbursements, but also includes investment management, um, payments, reporting, all sorts of bells and whistles. So it's really it's a one-stop shop for folks who need to either serve as trustee for a client or a loved one, or um, are providing advising to those who are doing so. But I'm going to start out, like I said, with the TrueLink card, um, since that's a component of both. And here you'll see on my page just a home page for this online dashboard. And you're going to see a ton of names right here. This is all kind of gobbledygook. Um, it's scrambled data, so we aren't obviously showing any, any real account data. But basically, if you were a professional and you had dozens of individuals you were serving as, as beneficiaries, all of their names would show up here. Um, 
let's say you're a family member using the card for a loved one, obviously you're just going to have one name show up here. That would be the loved one. So if I click on an individual, it takes you into that person's specific unique dashboard. And you're going to see all these various tabs across the top. I'm going to go into each of these. But we've really designed the system to be as intuitive and as user-friendly as possible. Um, so you can get the information that you need as quickly as possible, just because we know that crises can happen. Um, you're dealing with situations where people need money on an urgent basis or compliance issues are at stake. So on this first screen, you'll see um, all the transactions that Aaron has made in the recent past. And it's really, again, pretty simple. It'll show you the merchant, um, the location, the amount. And if you click over here on the review button, it'll provide you with a little more information about, um, about the purchase. You'll also see a mark over here, green arrow, or sometimes it could also be a, um, one of these red block marks as well. And especially around the blocked or alerts, that'll let you know if someone has attempted a transaction and it just hasn't um, it hasn't been approved for some reason and usually that's because of the card settings that you have intentionally put on the card. Sometimes it might be because someone has entered an incorrect PIN um, or they don't have enough funds in their account and like Steve mentioned we don't allow any overdraft so that's great we don't charge anybody to overdraft but in those instances the card would be blocked. So how do you actually fund the card? How do you load funds onto it? Again, really simple system. You could just connect a bank account here, and this is literally all the information that we would need. And once we verify that the account has been connected, you can go ahead and initiate the deposits onto the card just using this online system. And some folks, um, again, professionals or family members, sometimes they just like to push funds onto the card not using our system, so via direct deposit. Um, and in that, in that case, you actually don't use this interface here, um, but that is also possible. So once you've connected an account, if you are using this online system, you can go ahead and initiate recurring transfers or one-time transfers. Click the button, enter the amount, um, a memo if if you'd like to write a note there, and you can even schedule something for a future date. So let's say you have a beneficiary who has submitted a disbursement request for a dentist's appointment next week. You can transfer the correct amount, write the memo, submit it. You know that they'll have the funds for that specific merchant on that day um, and won't have any funds on the card prior to that. Scrolling down here, you can also just see recent transfers. Oh, and I did also want to show you this recurring transfer button as well. So like Steve was saying with these, um, with the spending plan, um, the Trulink card works really fantastically because if you can identify any kind of recurring expenses that you have approved, that are pre-approved, you can go ahead and set up the card so it loads exactly the amount that you need onto that card on a recurring basis and you don't have to go on and manually do that each month. So it saves you a ton of time and of course, depending on your rules and your arrangements that you've set up with the beneficiary, usually we recommend that folks always um, provide receipts to their special needs trustee just for uh, compliance purposes. So here at the spending monitor, this is really um, the, the most exciting aspect of the card. And this is where you're able to actually set it up and customize it so it only works in certain places and not in others. And this is really critical, again, for anyone who's receiving government benefits um, because you want to be able to protect their benefits eligibility. Um, Steve mentioned that, yes, you can indeed allow purchases from a, a special needs trust account for food and rent and things like that, but with the understanding that it will affect benefits. So you have all that flexibility though here in the system, which is really great. Um, you can allow things like access to cash. You can which allow of course normally for somebody on SSI you would never allow them access to cash. But Exactly. Most people, most folks that use the system with a special needs trust beneficiary block, all of this, um, 
Top line productions, these are just ones that our, our customers use pretty frequently. And especially, again, for beneficiaries in this type of situation, um, it's helpful to have a block on all online and phone purchases because someone could purchase food or something like that. But you may want to allow, you know, health and medical benefits because that is approved online. So it kind of thinks through those features, everything that um, someone administering a special needs trust would need to consider. Um, down here we've got merchant settings. So you can actually allow very specific merchants. You could allow Walmart in general, or you can allow a very specific Walmart on a very specific street corner. So any type of store, whether it's a mom and pop or a national chain, we can add here and you can either allow or block it. So this is a fantastic feature for folks who want to keep very, very tight controls on the card. What they end up doing usually is to basically block everything. So everything on this dashboard would be blocked and they would just allow very select merchants that may have approved, whether it's a, a pre-approved spending plan or it's a one-time disbursement request. And then down here you'll see um, our, our world of spending categories. So this basically encompasses everything that an individual could purchase, the macro category that that would belong to. And here you'll see you can allow and block. Once you switch that over, it's saved immediately, so there's no lag time. Um, this, is a, this is a special one. I'll, I'll, I'll block dating an escort since most folks do that. Um, so you'll see you know, grocery stores, restaurants, things like pawn shops, those are almost always blocked in a special needs trust situation. This one is an interesting one with gas stations. Um, what we've done is we've broken it up so you can actually block purchases inside where they could potentially purchase food or, or drinks and then allow purchases at the pump. So it just gives you so much ability um, and you can customize it for each beneficiary. You don't have to set up the same system for every single individual that you're serving. And then down here you can, you know, for those emergencies, you can override your settings, things like that, um, or send us a customization request. And I'll, I'll tell you one thing that we've learned, and there is there is somewhat of a learning curve uh, with that. I, I know more and more um, uh, what we're trying to find out is where do our beneficiaries like to shop, and we're getting more and more focus on what you know, on the merchant, um, because once again, we want it to be a good experience for our beneficiary. We want to minimize um, uh, things being denied. You know, the other thing I'll throw out, uh, Julia, because uh, is that my suggestion is for those of you that are looking at using this for your special needs trust, encourage the encourage the beneficiary to make some small purchase first, rather than fill up the. Uh, basket with $500 worth of something and uh, of stuff and then having it denied. Go make a small uh, purchase and make sure that uh, that it's going to work well. Yeah, and, and, and part of this, what we found with a lot of folks is that we may get a couple of denials to get started and once we work out what the problem is, then the beneficiary can use it with confidence. Yeah, that's it's a, it's a great point, Steve. Um, and and what we usually see is like Steve mentioned, you know, it does take a little bit. It's a for someone to get used to the system. I mean, it's it's a Visa card, so they're quite familiar with that in most cases. But um, just the nature of the card being customized to only work in certain places and not in others. And um, on our end, TrueLink does everything we can to kind of smooth that process for you. So we'll provide you with letters that you can send to your beneficiary to notify them of exactly how the card works, um, easy reminders of how they can check their balance, how they can find out about latest transactions, things like that, because they don't actually have access to this dashboard. Um, they have a different system that they use that's a little more lim limited, so they're not going to be able to, you know, obviously fund their own card. But we work with you to try to make that transition process as smooth, both for your organization, but also for your beneficiaries. Um, I'm going to just walk through the, the last three tabs on here quickly. Um, the alerts tab is a really cool feature. Steve also kind of mentioned this earlier, but it just enables you to receive either a text or email alert whenever something happens with the car. So, you know, things like big transactions. Let's say I want to know anything over a hundred bucks 
please send me a notification immediately. Um, let's say the balance is dropping low and we've set up the card to be one that is kind of a pre-authorized card. That could be alarming. It might make me want to initiate another transfer to the card. Um, people love these ones, the block transaction alerts. Um, they're just so helpful because you know before your beneficiary then calls you if there has been a problem for some reason, so you can kind of troubleshoot it right away. And then alert preferences. This enables you to set it up, again, so you can get it via text, via email, and you can even get it um, to different people. So let's say you're, you're a trustee and you want your office administrators also to have this information. We can set that up. If you're a family member using the card with a loved one, you can set it up so different family members can have access to this if you're coordinating care. Um, the reports tab, really simple but great functionality. Um, here you can just generate a report of transactions and this is super critical obviously if any of you are doing court reporting or need this for audited purposes. And then finally, this account tab, it's just got the cardholder's basic information, legal documents, that direct deposit information, if that's what you need. Um, and this one, which is very helpful, reporting a card lost, and lost or stolen, you just basically freeze the account so absolutely nothing can happen. So that is the Truly card as, in a nutshell. Um, it can be set up in a ton of different ways, just really depending on the beneficiary's need. So we see folks who have it set up where they can almost purchase, you know, they have the freedom to purchase almost anything they want, but because it's a beneficiary that the trustee really trusts, um, you know, they've, they've shown a, a good track record of submitting their receipts, they'll give that freedom because they know exactly what they can and cannot purchase. Let's say you've got a new beneficiary who is just kind of learning the ropes. You might set it up to be a bit more at first, just so nothing happens that could affect their benefits. So flipping over to the other system that I referenced, um, we have folks like Steve um, who use both the Truling card, but also this broader uh, trust management system that is really comprehensive. It, um, we provide investment management, disbursement management, reporting, compliance, basically the whole works that you need um, to really make sure you are running an efficient practice for your beneficiaries. And then it's also great for family members who have decided to serve as trustee for a loved one. It's just a really easy interface. Um, it's dramatically simplifies the process for them just because we all know it's incredibly complicated. And then if they want to involve an attorney in the process to kind of provide support, review, disbursement requests, things like that, we can also grant access to that attorney. So it just, it's a really great system that can be used by a lot of different types of folks. So I'm going to just show you this quickly. Um, we've got one client right here. So you can imagine that you're a trustee with one individual, you're just starting out, um, whether you're a family member or a professional. And let's click on Sarah's account. So here you're taken into an overview of her account. Up here you'll see a summary with the amount that she has invested, $430,000 roughly, and how much cash she's got. So 6,000. So what I mean by that is this is the amount that's in the investment account that's actively being managed, invested, so she can um, earn, earn um, additional funds on that investment amount. And then this is the amount in cash. This is what's liquid. This is what's ready to be used in case a disbursement needs to be made. And then down here you'll see all of her um, investment positions. So um, what's been bought, sold, any dividends, things that were transferred to cash. So I'm going to click now to the investment account. So we provide a little more detail on each of these various accounts. And here you can see details. Things again that were transferred to cash. So you can click in here and um, you can get even deeper transaction details. You can attach documentation if you need to do that as well. 
here clicking into the cash account, this is really where the magic happens. So the goal of this system is to make disbursements just so much easier. Um, so up here we have upcoming budget items, and down here we've got completed transactions. I'm going to look at these first. Um, you know, this is everything that, that has been expended from the account on behalf of Sarah. So let's just click into one. We can view this Caring Hands Home Care one. We can see that it was for a daytime caregiver. The payment type is EFT, so an electronic funds transfer. Um, and it looks like there's an invoice that's attached just for documentation purposes. So it's, again, it's just super easy. It's all in one place. It enables you to see it right here exactly what's, what's gone out of the account already. And then up here, you'll see upcoming items. So projected balance, the amount, um, it just keeps track of everything in the future, who the payee is, what type of mechanism is being used. Again, we've got electronic funds transfer, a check. Um, you might have the TrueLink card on there. Um, and it's just, it's incredibly helpful uh, for you as trustee to be able to look into the future and just have that visibility 60 days out, 90 days out, what you think is going to be expended from the account, what you might need um, in the cash account in case you need to liquidate some investment assets to make that available. So if we go now to this disbursements tab, you're going to see one time in recurring disbursements. Um, and again, we've designed this to be incredibly flexible. So we know that some professionals set up a system where you've got um, dual approvals, just as extra checks and balances. So what an individual can do is once they receive a disbursement request, they can click on this, select the payee. Let's say Sarah. Um, let's say Sarah. Almost make it Steve Dale. But anyway, no, I'm sorry. All right. Steve, okay. No. So um, <laughs> let's say there's a Verizon payment that needs to happen. You can enter the amount here, memo, cell phone service, um, and, we, and, and through the system you've entered in that traditionally you pay that via track to Verizon. Um, this is a one-time thing. Let's say Sarah had to buy something new for her phone. You can set up the date that you want it delivered category, so if there's um, additional kind of information that you want to attach there, I'll say cable service. Maybe it's, it's related to that. Any documentation? And I can submit this request. Provides you with an overview, and you create that disbursement. So now, if we give it a second, that'll show up. It shows up right here, and it, it um, does it by date, so that's why it's not at the top. And it's waiting for final approval. Um, so let's say I'm now a um, supervisor. I've received this information for Sarah's account. Say I'm Steve and I'm going through these disbursement requests and I want to review that. I go, I Steve log in. I look at my account. I can see all the disbursements and there's my Verizon wireless disbursement that was requested. I've looked at it, I've reviewed it, I think it's okay, I can go ahead and approve it. So it's just, it's a really great system, um, you know, whether you need dual controls or not, it just gives you that record of compliance, which is so critical. And this is particularly useful, I think, for uh, those of you that are professional trustees, and I see there's a number of you that are watching tonight, to be able to have that double um, approval process, and that just gives another level of safety. Yep, and it, it also, like I mentioned earlier, if you've got a family member using the system, they can grant access to the system to their attorney, to um, someone who's providing disbursement advisement, so they can be the one to actually give the final approval or to review all of the latest activity on the account. I know for our, for our clients, as we're doing this more and more, we have some of the trustees we work with who just want us to carry out the disbursement plan, and then we have some who want us to set it up and then go through and make the final approval themselves. And the nice thing is that gives the trustee the peace of mind knowing that um, 
uh, advisors, uh, such as uh, Shelley and Terry do most of this in the office, that they're giving that um, that review and making sure that the payments are appropriate and that and minimizing the chance of having a problem with their benefits. So it's it's been a great tool for that. Great. So obviously with the disbursements, you can set it up to have these one-time um, requests or recurring. And if I flip over to payees, this is the list of all the payees that, um, that have been registered for Sarah. So Toyota, Macy's, you know, Steve, ooh, Steve, <laughs> Steve, um, Uncle Bob, Car Wash. So anytime Sarah has has submitted either submitted or disbursement request, a one-time request, or has gotten something pre-approved, it gets entered into this system. And so you can easily submit payments, whether it's check or electronic transfer. So it's, it's again, very simple system. Write in the pay name, select the type, and you're good to go. With the reports tab, again, pretty self-explanatory. Anytime you need um, reporting from the investment account, the cash account, you just select the time period and you run that report. Um, for things like court accounting or tax forms, custom reports, those are all things that we can build for you. So um, what, what a lot of times folks will do is they'll provide us with a template, a court accounting template, because we know that every county likes to do things different, so we can customize that for you. So all of the information gets imported into the right form that you need. Here you'll see a TrueLink card tab, and this is kind of a, a mini version of what I showed you earlier. So if you're using the full TrueLink system, this entire comprehensive trust management system, you obviously can also um, create disbursements onto the TrueLink card. So again here you'll see that same dashboard, all that information, um, the alert settings as well. But here it's nice because it's just all in one place. You don't have to transfer to a different system. And then finally, you'll see this budget tab. So this is um, if you need to know how much cash is going to be in the account. Um, and it helps you feed your projections over time. So here you would see things like recurring or one-time items that get paid separately from the online system. But you still want that visibility um, because obviously it affects your balance in your, in your investment and cash account. So you can add those new items um, and just have everything accounted for here. So that is, that is the comprehensive system. Um, again, can be used in conjunction with the TrueLink card without or without. Um, and the TrueLink card can be used standalone or um, as part of this larger system. Steve, do you want to... Um, should I switch back to you? Well, now we can leave this up um, for now. Just, um, you know, once again, if there are any questions, um, we can ask them now. But but otherwise, for folks that are interested in um, learning more about TrueLink or contacting TrueLink, how would they do that, Julia? Great question. So um, very easy. Just go online to our website. It's TrueLink Financial. Dot com, and you can access all this information, both about the card and about our um, trust management system. Um, our phone number's there. Definitely give us a call, and our representatives can help you get set up. And, and what, what kind of assistance do you have, um, uh, both for the trustees and professionals, but also for uh, beneficiaries themselves? So, yeah, great question. That's actually one thing... Um, we don't talk about that often, our, our support for beneficiaries, because people are so excited by all the kind of tech bells and whistles. But I would say that it's one of our most important features, and it's just good old-fashioned people answering the phones when beneficiaries need support. So we have a fantastic support team that's specifically trained to work with folks with all sorts of disabilities um, in, a, in a compassionate and clear way. So we get a ton, I, I'm talking hundreds of inbound calls every day from beneficiaries who just want to know what their balance is, um, you know, what their latest transactions are, when they might be receiving funds to the card. 
Um, if they make a request, let's say Sarah called in and said she needed a new winter coat, um, we would then liaise with the trustee to make that happen. We would never um, execute any kind of discretion for the beneficiary, but we kind of facilitate that and it takes a ton off the trustee's plate. So um, beneficiaries can call us. They also can check all of this information online or we've got an automated system. So we try to give folks as many options as possible to get the information they need. And then if you're a professional or you're um, an, an administrator within a, um, an office, you can call us at any time. We've got, you know, on on call weekend staff providing support because we know crises do happen. So service is is definitely a core component of our system and what we offer both families and professionals. And we have we have a question here that I'll ask in a minute. But the other thing just to keep in mind is that obviously with the Dale Law Firm, our focus is on special needs trusts, but the card actually wasn't designed for special needs trusts. What other uses might it have? <laughs> great. Again, great question, Steve. So um, the card was actually designed for family members to use with their older loved ones um, to help prevent scams and financial abuse, so elder financial exploitation. So that was actually the initial intent of the card. and. Um, because of all the functionality that you saw today, it just kind of exploded and all sorts of different groups came out of the woodwork saying this would be really useful for me too. So like I mentioned earlier, we serve um, a broad range of professionals from representative trustees to government agencies to um, elder law attorneys, um, fiduciaries, tons of those. And then also families. So you've got a loved one with a disability and you want to help um, provide a little more support around money management, but you want to give them independence. You want to enable them to start making their own purchases, um, learn more about managing their finances. It's a great tool for that. Um, let's say you've got a loved one who um, may suffer from addiction issues, substance abuse, or mental health issues. Again, it's a great way to get someone money for things that they need in a way that still keeps them safe. So basically, any, like I mentioned earlier, any time an individual either needs a little support, um, needs a helpful learning tool, or it's a, a professional who is helping manage money, it, it's just a great uh, option for folks. And just on a personal note, my father uh, passed away several years ago, and I know the last few years before he passed, he had a had dementia and he started buying magazines um, his choice of magazines were somewhat odd but unfortunately they must keep a list of seniors who buy magazines because he bought one magazine then he bought five magazines then he bought 20 magazine subscriptions he bought magazine subscriptions for all the family members uh, he bought magazine subscriptions for people he hadn't seen in years and years and years um, and it was impossible to stop him had we been able to put him on a trilling card we could have restricted those things and also typically oftentimes there's unscrupulous uh, charities that take care of seniors as well and so you know once again my focus, of course, is primarily on special needs trusts, but this could be used by for seniors. <laughs> it can be used for college students. We uh, per, uh, help put one together um, uh, today for somebody to help limit the chances of overdrafts and, and also to encourage the uh, student to use the, uh, the funds for books and not for beer. Um, uh, here and so it, you know a restricted reloadable card has many many uses. Um, let me ask this question here. We have a question out there which is uh, a pretty common one which is how can you block purchases for food at stores that typically would not sell food but now since they all just about sell food items how do you you know how do you deal with that kind of situation? And Julie maybe I'll give an example here. Um, we have a parent that was a who uses one of these cards in the case and it's court monitored but whether it is or isn't that's just part of it um, and um, uh, we set it up with food restrictions because the child is on SSI and went to go purchase uh, some items at Sam's Club well lo and behold she purchased some Pedisure and it did block 
the purchase. Um, and so we had to make some adjustments. So I know for this, sometimes you'll have to look at the different stores and see what the adjustments are. But what else, but as far as blocking food at stores, um, here it is hard to find stores that don't sell any food at all. And Julie, what, what kind of uh, assistance might we be looking at or how might we try to limit the chance of having a problem? Yeah, it, it's one we get all the time, um, and we know it's top of mind for folks um, in this situation. So different um, trustees do it differently depending on the beneficiary. So, um, and I, I kind of alluded to this earlier, but let's say you have an individual who is just an awesome beneficiary. You've been serving them for 20 years. They know the rules. They are just as invested as you are in protecting their benefits. Um, and you want to be able to give them as much freedom as possible to make those purchases that are authorized. In that situation, a trustee could provide access to stores like Walmart, Target, places where you know they're going to get their basic needs, and they could potentially purchase food. But that individual knows that they they are not supposed to. They can't without having it affect their benefits. Um, then those individuals tend to return their receipts. So there's a paper trail that they didn't um, make any purchases that would affect benefits. And it's, it's a great system in that situation. Um, the individual is able to um, have much more freedom, much more immediacy in terms of access to funds and able to purchase things when they need them. Um, but you feel comfortable with that individual having that level of, um, of freedom. And, and oh. going back to the um, concept that despite the fact that we very much like the TrueLink card, it's not a magic card. And actually the first time that I met the TrueLink folks was uh, at a program in Texas and I had uh, heard about this thing and checked it out and you know uh, I started thinking well as a attorney who oversees distributions and as a trustee myself you know if I got reviewed by Social Security what would it be that I would want in my records and that's where you know I worked with and by the way Julia did a, quite a bit of work with this but that's where I developed the um, compliance guide and the toolkit to really put together a system of accountability that would minimize a problem if they were audited by SSI. So we'll go back to the parent who likes to use Sam's Club um, here. And um, uh, what we do is we review the disbursements every month. What we have is our we she uh, keeps an envelope with her and sticks the um, receipts in the envelope, mails them to Shelley every month. Shelley takes a look at it. As long as she's in compliance, we keep reloading the card. If we have somebody who habitually uh, is out of compliance here, then maybe this is not the tool for them. Um, or maybe we should have somebody else using that tool. Um, but when it works, it does give that level of autonomy. Yeah, exactly. And and I was I just wanted to give the example of um, someone who maybe like like I mentioned earlier, it's just starting out. It's a new beneficiary, or someone who maybe doesn't have the best track record of compliance. Um, in those situations, again, what people tend to do is basically block everything on the card. And once you, once you, the trustee, receive a disbursement request, you've gone ahead, you've reviewed it, you've approved it, you load the exact amount for that purchase onto the card and you make that those funds available only at that single merchant um, and then you require them to submit a, a, a receipt afterwards um, and if all is all is good and well they can continue using the card. But um, you know, it, it does allow for that level of restriction. But yes, understand that if you kind of gave someone carte blanche at a store like Walmart, you know, and you don't you don't trust them, you haven't had that conversation, you have them perhaps review an agreement, sign an agreement about how they will be using the card, you might not feel comfortable using it. And this will probably be our last question for tonight because it's this business tale reminds me it's dinner time. But um, here uh, this is a good comment here, which is, it sounds like I need a separate system to track how the money from SSI is spent. 
uh, mainly on food and rent. Um, now, is there a computer tool that you recommend for that? Um, well, just let me make make a comment that you do have to really bifurcate your thinking um, um, here, which is when you are the representative payee for somebody on SSI and the review that they're going to do here is they want to make sure that you're using the money for the beneficiary and paying their basic needs, which are food and shelter. Um, I'm not aware of a computer tool, but who knows, maybe we should talk to the programmers at TrueLink and see if there's something they might develop um, here. Um, but but the tracking for that is different than you would for the disbursements here from the Special Needs Trust, whether you use the TrueLink system or not. For that, basically what you're looking at is making sure that all disbursements are um, for the beneficiary, that they're in the tr trustee's discretion, that the trustee authorized it. We're not giving them carte blanche to, uh, to any distribution they want. This is where the plan is really useful because basically you're pre-approving um, distributions. And then the second part of that is you have to monitor to make sure that the beneficiary or the beneficiary advocate is in compliance um, here. Um, so, um, and this this will be the last question, and I'll, Julie, I'll let you make the last uh, comment since you're our guest tonight. Um, somebody uh, is asking, well, I lost track of time and missed the very beginning of the presentation uh, here. Will I be able to listen to it? And the answer is, I will know in about 10 minutes when we stop this and, and hit stop record, and with a little luck, and so far um, we've been able to record these things and come out. This should be on our YouTube channel, and for those of you that signed up, you'll get a notice about this. This should be on our YouTube channel by early next week, and it's something that you can watch over and over and over again. Julia, it was great for the demonstration um, here. This is just an overview, but I know that both you and the TrueLink team have been good partners uh, and are available to assist in working through this and, and seeing you know, if this is the tool for you and how to make this work. So Julia, any last comments here? And then after that, it's dinner time. <laughs> no, no last comments other than um, we just are always um, really, really happy to answer any questions that folks have um, and just understand that in a special needs trust situation, each individual really is unique and have a very unique set of needs. Um, and we've built a system that tries to be flexible as much as possible to accommodate those needs. So if you have questions about it or you're wondering, how oh, can it do this for this specific person, please feel free to give us a call, reach out um, via our website, and we're happy to kind of talk you through it and see if it's the right thing for you. And I also know that the programmers um, at, at TrueLink, uh, uh, there, this seems to be a work in progress. It seems like the project's never finished. And so for those of you that use it or that kind of thing, if you have comments about things that might make it better, things that you think are a problem or whatever, um, I know that we're in constant communication with the TrueLink team. Uh, I know they always appreciate your comments, and um, we keep seeing more and more tools that are being built with this system. So it's always, uh, you know, I, I have to say, one of the things that I really like about this system is um, it's using Silicon Valley technology to this antiquated SSI and Medi-Cal Medicaid system. And, you know, it's really refreshing to, you know, have these um, tools available and have these folks dedicated to building these tools that really help us improve the quality of life of our beneficiaries. With that, um, it's time for dinner, and, uh, uh, and we'll see you next month.